Hi, I'm James and welcome to another review. Today we're looking at the Horm Army by Andrew Frampton, uh, which is a module and a faction for Twilight 2000. Now it's 10 pages long, which is sort of a fairly normal standard for an encounter. Uh, and it features a new Polish faction. And I'm going to massacre the pronunciation, so I apologise to anybody who's Polish. The Army Krajowa, which is um, the home army. Now this was um, named after a force that existed in the Second World War. It was the force that was heavily involved in the Warsaw Uprising. So there is a nice bit of historical background in there. Now it's a group that is um, mainly concerned with fighting the Soviets which makes sense. Uh, it, the module itself covers one cell. It's intended as a bit of an underground army. Um, you can probably get a lot of inspiration from that by reading uh, books on the Second World War. Um, one that I'm going to use a few ideas from is Das Reich by Max Hastings, which um, features an awful of good uh, ideas that I'm going to incorporate. I'll give an example of one or two later on. Uh, it does give some adaptations for a Swedish setting. Um, works quite nicely in a Swedish setting. Um, obviously it's a case of name change. It's to the home guard there. Uh, and there's plenty of detail there. The NPCs are nicely detailed. Um, they're well drawn. Uh, the Soviets are very two-dimensional. Uh, although I am reminded of Terry Pratchett's observation about the fact that the hero sorry, the villain of the book Nation was a bit two-dimensional and Pratchett's observation was, oh, I overshot, I was going for one-dimensional. Um, it basically features um, this resistance cell, which the players encounter and get on well with. Uh, unfortunately, it's due to come under t attack by the Soviets. Um, now, one thing I did spot was it doesn't at any point give the actual strength of the cell. Uh, you could obviously tailor that to suit. Uh, it does give you some clues in that the maximum number that you can have. So uh, that does sort of tie in there. Um, now a few extra ideas that you may want to incorporate. Um, it is There are some dark bits in this module which wouldn't take a lot to remove. Uh, depends how dark you want the module to be. Uh, the character of Leon um, have him slipping off. Um, the PCs might think he's deserting or talking to the Soviets when in fact he's doing the opposite. Uh, that might lead to some interesting um, parts. Now it's entirely possible that the Home Army actually had a meeting with advisors from Delta, the Green Berets or the SAS um, who are looking for something. If you're playing a background from the earlier edition, you could tie this in very, very easily to the um, Operation Reset, as is used in the first edition, with the group that heads towards Krakow. So you could, you could tie that in. Um, if you want a very dark encounter, and I have to be honest, I've taken this from a real life event, have them have a woman captive in the camp who is quite helpful to the group, um, she helps perhaps sew uniforms, do think, does things like that, cooks for them. Um, but she's, also, she's about to be executed by the group for helping the Soviets. Um, that might lead to some very interesting moral dilemmas for the group. So it does work um, quite easily. Um, the Soviet attack there is a plan for. I'm going to give an alternative plan that so you GMs have got a bit of option. Um, what I actually thought was have the attack come in from the southeast, where there's the cliff and the urban area. Uh, two assault groups with the commander, seven men, and the anti tank team, and the second group of eight, with the mortar and the spotter off to the um, potentially the southeast, but you could move them to the southwest quite easily. The plan is the commander will move in with his group and seize area 12. The second group then moves to the trees to the south of five. Uh, with a simultaneous assault. Mortars firing at the north end of the camp. Um, orders drop on the south of the camp if the approach is detected. And the aim would be to destroy the tank first before sweeping up. Probably using the group um, to the 
east to form a fire base while the other group moves through the camp. That was how I would do the attack. Um, it works fairly well f for me. Uh, there's different options you can put in. So th th there's plenty you, you can do with that. Um, it's a nice simple encounter. It gives a bigger group that you can be bringing into future campaigns. It suggests if the Soviet Spetsnaz commander survives, he can become uh, a recurring villain. Yeah, it, it's nice, it's simple, um, and it makes a nice little encounter. You make a nice gaming night out of that. Could even play quite a nice little battle um, going off. I think the trick with the, the battle is to make it, if you bear in mind, it's Spetsnaz against um, effectively resistors, it's going to be short and nasty. Um, emphasize the confusion have the soviets with a few smoke grenades to throw have them do have perhaps have add a sniper to that to their group even if you don't use a sniper have a couple of people perhaps just in the back firing away a uh, single shot at targets as they appear emphasize the confusion uh, get the pcs working with npcs that they've come to like and know and kill one in front of them emphasize how nasty this fight is um, so yeah um, I mean it's three dollars ninety nine it's not exactly breaking the bank it's a nice little encounter you get an evenings gaming out of that with some very nicely drawn NPCs uh, and a few nice little plot hooks as is done in his previous um, things Andrew's done some nice rumors that are going to involve this he's done various little bits and pieces that will tie things in uh, and I would highly recommend it I think it's a very nice little scenario hope that's been useful and I'll see you soon for another review